Hey, what up Long Beach? Welcome back to the show, your weekly five minute video recap of the top local sports stories. The show is brought to you by the Long Beach Post and the 562.org. That's us. He's JJ. I'm Mike. And at the 562.org right now, we're talking about the biggest sports stories of the year. Well, certainly no list of the top Long Beach sports moments of the last year would be complete without mentioning the wilson Polly football game that ended up being the more league championship, but also the return of what we felt like is Long Beach football. It's the oldest rivalry in Long Beach, regardless of sport. And it was great to see the sellout crowd, the unbelievable atmosphere that these kids deserve for a rivalry that goes back, I mean, at this point, 100 years. Uh, Polly obviously ended up coming out on top as they have Mo- for most of that rivalry, most of the history of that rivalry, but it was obviously a better game than it had been in recent years. And you really felt like it lived up to the hype in that it was such an exciting game uh, to cover and to watch. Wilson set records offensively. Quarterback Ryan Petway set records offensively. They had one of their best starts ever in the history of their school. Still not enough to knock off Polly, but it makes us very excited for next year's football. One Wilson athlete who's not losing to anybody is Rachel Glenn, the state champion superstar uh, for the Bruins on the track and in the fields, track and field, multi-talented superstar. As a sophomore, she won the state championship in the high jump, came up one spot short in the state championships this year, but still was the state champion in the 300 hurdles, which she didn't even compete in as a sophomore. So her junior season was certainly a memorable one for the Bruins, and Rachel Glenn continues to be one of the state's brightest stars. One of my favorite favorite videos to cut this year was that CIF Southern Section meet here in Southern California where Glenn literally walked off the track from winning her medal in the 300 hurdles, changed her shoes, changed her number on her uniform, moved the scorer's table so that she could run and then take gold in the high jump as well. A lot of fragile game out there. Rachel Glenn, she does not have a fragile game. No, she's an absolute baller. Uh, Another group of ballers at number three, the Long Beach Poly boys track and field team that won a CIF championship. It was actually their first CIF championship in 12 years, although they have won a state title since then. Uh, The Jackrabbits team was so deep and so talented this year. You had guys like Liam Anderson, who ended up signing with UCLA, who, frankly, we didn't really see at all as a junior and just burst onto the scene after three years of hard work to become an elite hurdler. They also obviously had a ton of talent in the sprints and the relays as we're used to seeing for the Jackrabbits. It was a well-rounded and deep team and fitting that they won Polly's 122nd CIF championship. That is unbelievable to have that many CIF championships, but hey, Polly's been running and has been fast for a very, <laughs> very long time. It's not surprising that we have another track rabbit event here in this, but I don't think we saw that tra- championship coming, and I think that's why it was so exciting. We go to number two, where this one's also pretty obvious. The Cabrillo Boys saw soccer season is one to remember and they lost in the CIF Southern Section Championship game. It was a familiar 1-0 defeat, but it did not define their season. They went on to win the CIF State Division 2 title, the first CIF Soccer State Championship here in the city of Long Beach, won by Cabrillo, and it was won on the west side. An incredible week of state championship games over there at Cabrillo High School on the new facility, and they put on a show for all of their Jaguar fans. Yeah, the weather was uh, very dreary, but our memories are all very sunny of a just tremendous dominant championship performance from those Jaguars to win uh, not just the first soccer championship, state championship in city history, but the first postseason championship of any kind for the Moore League's newest high school. So we love to see that for the Jaguars. Uh, But boy, you want to talk about something that everyone saw coming, JJ, our top moment of the year, hands down, no question, we were all in the pyramid watching the Long Beach State men's volleyball team win its second consecutive NCAA championship. It's the first back-to-back NCAA title in school history, and it was won by maybe the best team in school history. Without question, the best recruiting class in school history. You've got guys on this team who are going to be playing for the Olympic team in just a few years. And also, to do it back-to-back, to do it on your home court, that's great. But the year between winning it at UCLA last year, also our top moment, no surprise, <laughs> all the pressure, all the raised expectations, the fact that some of these guys like TJ DeFalco, player of the year, could have just left. But they came back and they wanted to win it for their school, for their city, and do it on their own home turf. That's a lot of pressure. But to put their city on their back and they did it in front of their home crowd. And to take that video clip of them lifting that national championship trophy in the pyramid, definitely not something we ever thought we'd do on this job. 
Those are just five of our 10 top sports stories of 2019. To see the rest of them, you can go to lbpost.com right now. Tell us what you think.